So today we're cooking turkey. Turkey, turkey, turkey. Um, we love making turkey in the pressure cooker. It's always tender, always juicy. You don't have to worry about it drying out. Right. And um, we've got a turkey breast today and we're using an eight quart. Mm -hmm. um, so you can fit a whole turkey in an eight quart. It's tough to fit a whole turkey in a six quart. Yeah, you, what do you, you, we've done it before where you buy a smaller thing, what, just a turkey breast? Yeah, that's what we've got, a bone-in turkey breast oh, okay. today, so that's what we're cooking today. Um, I like this year-round. I'm happy to eat turkey year-round. <laughs> um, uh, we always make it because we never have enough turkey left over to eat turkey sandwiches the yeah. next day with like right. the leftover cranberry jelly. On Thanksgiving when my big family comes, mm -hmm. I cook one in the oven. Mm -hmm. Nice big one, and then we cook the turkey breast um, extra so that we have lots of leftovers. So and then plenty you've got of white meat. Great gravy that you can cook up right in the pot. You don't yeah, have to get another that, That's one, another awesome thing. We're going to put in flavorful ingredients. We're going to use turkey stock mm -hmm. instead of water so your gravy will be it's flavorful. Really yummy. So yummy. So I'm Jen. And I'm Barbara. And we're with Pressure Cooking today. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that turkey in. We're using a trivet that has handles. Um, if you don't have one with handles, um, just put your regular trivet in the bottom of the pot. And if you wanted to, like sometimes I'll make a sling, like out of foil or something, and lift the turkey down right. with it. We're just going to add a little bit of vegetables so that that gravy will be super flavorful. Mm -hmm. Some celery, some onion, and just a little sprig of thyme. And then go ahead and add that turkey stock. We season the turkey fairly simply with um, just fresh ground pepper and uh, salt, but if there's a spice blend that you love on your turkey, absolutely you can season your turkey that way. Just be aware that it will change the flavor of your gravy, that your gravy will taste like the spice blend in your yeah, turkey. You can even rub some seasoned butter yeah. underneath the skin, some people like that. Mm -hmm. And we're making it in the Instant Pot Pro Crisp um, because it has a um, air fryer lid attachment that we can use to kind of brown up the turkey a little bit. The one thing about pressure cooking your turkey is you're not going to get that crispy skin. So if you're a big crispy skin lover, you're going to need to either air fry it or make it. Yeah, you can finish it off in the oven, which mm -hmm. will help, but it's never as pretty as if it's done mm -hmm. all the way in the oven. Yeah. But we never see it. We don't usually serve it. Dad slices yeah. it all up before right. it even gets to We're the table. We're not big skin eaters so he pulls that off and we just slice it up so that's that's how we like to do it okay so i'm gonna pour this on the side so i don't like wipe the seasoning off okay all right and then you just lock the lid in place so we're gonna lock the lid in place and once again just make sure you've got it your seal in place because the last thing you want when you're cooking turkey especially for a get together is to have it not not, not sealed, sealed properly so go ahead and lock it and set the cook time for 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Okay, so our turkey is done. We're gonna go ahead and use these handles on the trivet to lift it out. This is when the mini mitts come in really handy because that is a hot turkey. Let's set it there and then we'll go ahead and foil. Yeah, cover it with foil and keep it hot while we make the gravy. I'm gonna take some of these bigger pieces of onion and celery out and just set them aside. And then we'll go ahead and strain the juices just so that you can get rid of excess um, fat. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't look too fat, you don't need to do that. It's, it's optional. Um, when we make this at home, our family loves gravy, so we tend to add double the liquid double the turkey broth and um, just so we can get a little bit more gravy. It takes a little bit longer to come to pressure but it doesn't change the cook time at all. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Okay. And then we can take this out and just move this aside. And we'll go ahead and pour that into the um, this is the OXO fat separator. I really like it because it's got this big thing on top that catches most of the veggies that we've left aside. I'll just put, put that right that back, back in. Yep. And then it's got this cool like stopper thing that keeps the pressure in there. But when you pull it up, only the turkey broth goes in and you've got the fat kind of on the top. Um, 
just pour it in sideways and um, sometimes I'll pour it through a mesh strainer if we are worried about like the little fine bits of like turkey meat that's in there. And just keep pouring until you get close to the fat spot. You think so? Like that? Yep, that's probably pretty yeah, good. Most of it. Okay, so now we're going to thicken our gravy. We've got three tablespoons of cornstarch and three tablespoons of cold water. Okay, and we'll go ahead and whisk that cornstarch. You want to use cold water so that um, the cornstarch doesn't start to activate. Um, the cornstarch activates at a close to boiling point temperature. It's not exactly boiling point, but close to it. If, if you prefer, you could use a flour mixture, but I like with lighter flavors like turkey and chicken, I like to use cornstarch. And then I typically use flour with beef and that type of thing. But some people prefer to use um, flour. Um, Wondra is a great one yeah. for making um, flour, thickening flour. I'd with never flour. heard of Wondra before, and it comes in a little like round tube thing, kind of like cornstarch yeah. does. Um, it's it's a blue container. Initially, I was looking for a big bag of Wonder Flower, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I've got this whisk. I don't think there's any lumps in there. So grab me that spoon. and yep. You want to uh, stir it in while you're adding it, because it can thicken quickly. If you are using flour to thicken, you'll want to get a little bit of the juices from the pot to help warm it up so the flour doesn't seize up. Cornstarch doesn't do that as much. Not Why? As much. Just because of what it is. And you can use, you know, arrowroot or whatever your favorite thickener is if you prefer, but cornstarch is my go-to. So with making gravy, sometimes um, when you're making gravy, so <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just cleaning, cleaning it up, you know, as you go. There you go. Perfect. Ah! <laughs> All right, so when you're making gravy, um, it's not always easy to tell what kind of a ratio you're going to need. Some, sometimes the turkey will release some more juices and you'll need um, a little bit more cornstarch slurry um, or perhaps um, the turkey didn't release as many juices as you thought it would. So you'll just add a little bit more of the turkey broth. But there's no magic formula with gravy. It's just how thick you like it. Mm -hmm. um, gravy will continue to thicken as it cools. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. And so I got gravy thickened to exactly the right consistency in the pot. And then by the time we got dinner on the table, it was more like turkey jello <laughs> than turkey gravy. Um, so I always like to, if you're going to make air, air on the side of it being a little bit too thin because nobody likes turkey jello. Um, <laughs> Zero stars. Um. <laughs> okay, so I think that's probably a good consistency. So we're going to go ahead and hit cancel and turn that off. And like I said, it will thicken as it cools. But we didn't add any salt when we cooked. Yeah. So you're going to have to add quite a bit mm -hmm. of salt and a little bit of pepper. Okay, so add some salt and pepper. They win. That's good. And pepper. Perfect. All right. Now? I generally will under season it just a little bit. That way guests can add their own salt and pepper. I like salt quite a bit. Right. So we're just going to leave that sitting in the pressure cooker. It'll stay nice and warm while we slice up our turkey. All right. All right, so now we're going to show you how to brown the turkey. Again, this isn't a step we usually do when we're cooking at home. Um, right, we've taken the gravy out, rinsed out the pot. And, and we didn't take the time to like full on soap it because it's just gonna get dirty again. Right, and we're gonna go ahead and put our hot turkey back in. So you can see it kind of got a little bit brown from the spices we put on there. But if you want to just crisp it up a little bit more, then you can use the air fryer lid. Yep. So um, this is the Instant Pot Pro Crisp. So it's got this special like plug that fits directly onto the uh, pressure cooker itself. And then it has the control panel on the front. 
Um, it, this, this method works great. We've done it in our Ninja Foodie before. We've done it in um, with just a regular uh, crisp lid that you can just sit on top that has its own separate cord. Um, but we'll just put this right in place. It just fits right into the, right over. There we go. And uh, we will hit, um, set the cook temperature for 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, you just kind of want to check regularly. Uh, we did, this is, uh, last time we did it, it was like, what, a five and a half pound turkey. It took us about 15 minutes. So um, we'll get it going and then we will uh, come back when it's done so we can see how it looks. Okay, so we have been checking periodically and it's, it's close enough. So we're going to take the lid off and remember to put your, um, on the trivet, it's Crisp real hot lid. on the bottom, yeah. We'll go ahead and see how, it, like it's nice, nice and brown. The skin's a little bit crispier. We could have gone longer, and again, it's totally your taste. So if you want it browned, so that brown that it's almost like black and brown, you can still keep going. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna slice that up and then plate it up for you. So um, this was about a five pound, six pound yeah. turkey. If you were, turkey is smaller, you're gonna to have to decrease the cook time. If it's a little bit larger, you'll want to increase your cook time. We've got a, a guide on our post on our website about, you know, just kind of guidelines. It's not an exact science. And you wanna make sure you thaw your turkey with enough time. I think our six pound turkey needed to thaw for, what, two days? Yeah. Um, because the last thing you want is a turkey that is cooked on the outside and still frozen in the middle. It's not safe or happy. So there's your tender, juicy turkey. We've drizzled it with a little bit of gravy. It just helps it stay uh, tender while you're waiting to get everything else on the table and corralling everyone to come and sit down. So um, we hope you love this. Uh, if you Leave us a comment. Let us know if you have questions. Please let us know. We'll respond to your comment. And be sure and like and subscribe for more great recipes. Yep. And we'll make sure that all of our Thanksgiving um, recipes are included in the description down below. So thanks so much for watching.